So uh, my research group, we specialize in um, epigenetics, but we're really focused on, on uh, fertility in men uh, and things like how can the environment impact um, sperm function, um, how does it impact uh, the health of the next generation, and so that's where the epigenetics can, uh, comes in and connects fertility to the, to the male environment. Um, we use a combination of uh, clinical studies, different populations in the world with different uh, environmental exposures, um, and mouse models to try and get at the mechanisms. Um, so basically, I would say we're studying paternal epigenetic inheritance if we really wanted to narrow it. So, you know, our main question, our overarching question in the lab is, you know, how do things like um, a man's diet, uh, whether he's exposed to different toxins or not, whether he uses cannabis or not, how much he drinks, uh, his BMI, how does that impact that heritable layer in the sperm at the level of DNA methylation and chromatin modifications? And then how does that relate to his fertility and then the health of the next generation? Um, and so it's really hard to study the health of the next generation um, in humans uh, because you can't directly make those connections. So that's where we use the mouse models uh, to get at the mechanisms to look at um, transmission of chromatin from the sperm, whether that's change in the sperm is retained in the embryo, and then how does that impact gene expression or function in the embryo at the cellular level. Yeah, so, you know, the field of epigenetic inheritance, unfortunately, um, has suffered a little bit from being blocked at the level of association. So where we're really just looking at, you know, we do this exposure in an animal model, or we look at a segment of the human population that has an exposure such as high levels of stress um, or a different diet. And then how does that associate um, generally with uh, the next generation, you know, in terms of phenotypes? And, and we really need to get beyond that level of association and get to how do changes in the germline, whether it's in uh, oocytes or in sperm, how do those lead to, you know, functional differences in the early embryo? And then how do those later on lead to, to the phenotypes that are associated with disease. So we, we really need to be doing more mechanistic studies and we have the tools now to, to actually do that. So I think there's going to be huge leaps in the field in terms of answering those big questions like not only do we change something in the sperm at the level of the epigenome, but being able to track it through to the embryo to show that, you know, there is a functional mechanistic link. So we do um, a lot of next generation sequencing. So we do um, lots of chromatin immunoprecipitation um, in collaboration with some other labs at McGill. We do um, DNA um, analysis genome wide using this custom DNA methyl capture approach. Um, we do ultra low input uh, chromatin immunoprecipitation to study in embryos, um, chromatin changes that are transmitted from the sperm to the embryo. We lose lots of uh, genetic models of epigenetic inheritance.